Hello and welcome to Mass Junction. This is Gladys Briggs and in this video we're going to be having a look at the WJEC past paper for uh, May 2018 and it's a mathematics numeracy unit 1 non-calculator higher tier. So I'm just going to start off by writing my name and then we can go on to the to answering the questions. There are a total of 14 questions in this um in this past paper and if you're yet to subscribe to this channel please click on the subscribe button and on the notification bell so that youtube lets you know when we upload new stuff so surname is i'm gonna write my surname the ricks and my first name is gladys okay Now, question one says the concrete base of Miss Morgan's new bungalow is shown below. So that's the concrete base, okay? Um, and the diagram is not drawn to scale. And the concrete base of Miss Morgan's bungalow is 0 0.2 meters thick, okay? And it wants us to calculate the volume of the concrete base. And we must show all our workings. This is a, an OCW question, which means that you are expected to communicate every step by every step that you take give a good explanation of what you're doing and why you're doing it and um both spellings and everything will be considered and how you organize your steps will be considered okay let's jump in now this is this is a, a volume problem and to calculate the volume of any 3d shape you're talking about calculating the um area of the cross section and multiplying it by the by the height if i take the thickness of this bungalow um, base to be 0 0.2 meters which they give as the thickness then all i have to do now is calculate the area of this base and then multiply it by the by the thickness so let's do that this, this right here is uh, a composite shape, which means it's made up of more than one uh, basic shape. So what I'm going to do is split it into two shapes. You can either split it this way or split it this way. So let's, let's split it this way. Yeah. So in that case, we can calculate the area of shape A and then calculate the area of shape B. Okay, so uh, shape A is would be four by five meters. So the area of shape A would be length times width. Four times five meter. which is equal to 20 meter square. Now let's work out the area of shape B. Area of shape B would be equal to the length times the width. Now make sure that you're writing everything out correctly. Um, the length times the width, um, we've got the length, maybe one side to be 15 meters and this side to be 20 meters but we know that this oh, okay. we got this side to be 15 meters and this side to be 20 meters but we know that this side right here is five meters so if we to find out the this this length here it would be 20 meters minus five meters that's equal to 15 meters so um so that looks like a square so shape B would be 15 times 15 meters, which is equal to, which is equal to 225 meter square. So the, the total area of the shape, the total area of the cross section of that shape, total, total area of cross section would be equal to um 20 meters square plus 225 meter square that is equal to 
245 meter meter square square meters now to calculate the volume we have to multiply uh, that by 0 0.2 so let's do that so therefore the volume volume would be equal to uh, area of cross section times the thickness okay this is equal to uh, 245 times 0 0.2. 0 0.2, I think that's the same thing as uh, 2 over 10, which is 1 over 5. That is the same thing as multiplying that or dividing that by, by 5, okay? Uh, if you divide that by 5, uh, 5 can go into 25 um, 4 times. Remains uh, 4 and 5 can go into... 45 can go into 45 nine times so that would be 49 uh cubic meters okay and and that's it done okay question two says that uh let me zoom that in a little bit more for you uh okay Mr. Graham is building a garage. A concrete mixer lorry holds a maximum load of six cubic meter of concrete. There is a fixed standard delivery charge of 35 pounds per load. The concrete costs 45 pounds per cubic meter. Mr. Graham orders two thirds of the maximum load of concrete for the base of his garage floor. What is the total cost of Mr. Graham's order? So he ordered two thirds. Of the maximum load and uh, what was the maximum load again maximum load is six meter six cubic meter so two-thirds of six would be equal to uh, 12 over 3 which is equal to four cubic meter so he sh mr. Graham ordered four cubic meter of um, concrete okay uh, there's a fixed standard delivery charge of 35 pounds per load and the concrete cost 45 pounds per cubic meter so four times 45 pounds per cubic meter would be four times two is 100 is 90 so four times four should be 180 cubic meter yeah and um if we add um if we add the delivery charge Plus the delivery charge. Yeah, it will be 180 plus 35 pounds. That is five. Uh, that's 11. Carry one. 215 pounds total. Okay, so that is the total cost of Mr. Graham's order. Done. Question two says Olga. Let me zoom that in for you. Olga took out a high interest loan for £400. She paid back £49 per month for 20 months to clear the loan. Calculate the total interest that Olga paid as a percentage of the original loan. Percentage of the original loan. That's the thing that, that's the area that you want to be, you want to highlight. Because that's the place that lots of people found confusing with that question okay so if she took out a high interest loan for 400 pounds and she paid back uh, 49 pounds per month for 20 months 49 times 20 okay 49 times 10 is 490 times 2 would be 980 so that would be uh, 980 pounds now um, so that's the total amount she repaid back okay Total amount repaid. Now, what was the total interest on top of the four hundred pounds? Total interest repaid would be the new amount minus the original amount. The new amount is nine hundred and eighty pounds minus the original amount, which was four hundred pounds. That leaves us with. 580 pounds okay now the question that you need to ask yourself is 
how much out of 400 how, what percentage out of 400 is 580 pounds okay what percentage out of 400 is 580 pounds so um and to write that 400 to write that as a percentage of amount problem that would be 580 out of 400 times 100 percent yeah if you work this out um if you work this out this is going to leave you with um 125 125 no nope. that would be um that would be by the hundred times five hundred and five hundred and eighty times a hundred. Uh, let's see. That that should be a hundred and forty five percent actually. One hundred and forty five percent. Because five eight zero 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 over four zero zero. Yeah, those two cross out. You'd be left with five hundred and eighty divided by four. That's one hundred and forty five. Yep, that's much more correct. Question three is a bearing problem. It says Sarah is carrying out a survey of the three villages. Kum, Alfir, and Gwindir. The diagram below shows the positions of the three villages. So you got Gwindir here, Alfir here, and Kum here. So the question says, what is the bearing of Alfir from Gwindir? Um, so the word to highlight there for this one is from, okay? From Gwindir. So that's where you're going to be measuring that from. Remember, to measure your bearings, you have to uh, measure it from the north position. Luckily for us, the north position had been clearly um, shown there. Okay, from the north position, uh, clockwise and um, using three digits. So the angle that we want to measure is the one that says green deal. Okay, uh, green deal going clockwise is this one here. Okay, but we got the inner one to be 170. So all we have to do for that is 360 minus 170 360 minus 170 would give you 190 degrees so i'm going to circle this one now question 3b i found a little bit tricky just because i didn't read this part of it okay now these are the things that they put in the questions to so try and catch you out so watch out for things like that now it says circle what is the bearing of comb from alvir now you're going to be applying your knowledge of corresponding angles in this case have a look at this here right here okay if this line continued up there let me use the ruler to show you that if this line continued up there then then this angle corresponds to this angle okay this angle corresponds to this angle but we can get the value okay the we can get measure this angle by subtracting 152 from 180 so 152 180 minus 152 would give you 28 degrees and if they are corresponding angles it means that this angle this angle right here would also be equal to 28 degrees. Once we got this angle, then what we're being required to work out is the bearing of cum from our view. So this is the angle that we want to measure. We want to calculate. But we already have this one. So all we have to do now is subtract. 360 minus 28 is going to leave us with 332. So I'm going to circle that one. Now, question 3C says the area of the land covered by the three villages is 200 kilo square kilometers. The total population of the three villages is 8,400 people. What is the population density of the three villages? Give your answers in population per square kilometer. Okay, population density... is equal to uh, the number of people over the land area this is equal to um, 8400 people 
that was given in the question 8400 people divided by 200 square kilometer that was given in the question if I cross these two zeros at the end of I'm left with 84 divided by 2 that is equal to 42 uh, population per uh, square kilometer uh, question 3c I I is a ratio problem uh, it says that the population of Kum, Aldir and Gwindir are in the ratio 3 to 4 to 5 calculate the population of Gwindir okay so the three villages are in the ratio 3 to 4 to 5 and the total for the three villages is giving us 8400 so the first thing we want to do is add up the ratios 3 plus 4 plus 5 is going to give us um, 12. Now, that 12 represents one, one portion. Okay, so let's, um, let's divide 8,400 by 12. Oh, to get to, yeah, let's divide 8,400 by 12 to see how many is in each portion. Uh, 12 can go into 84 seven times so that would be 700 okay one portion contains 700 okay and if one portion contains 700 then that means we're looking for um, uh, Gwindir Gwindir is giving us uh, a ratio of five so that would be 700 times five which is equal to three thousand five hundred people okay okay so question four is a compound interest problem and the question says Kingsley invest three thousand pounds in an account that pays two percent compound interest per annum he does not make any further payments into his account he does not withdraw any money from his account how much will Kingsley have in his account after two years? So you got um, you got the amount to be um, you got the principal amount to be three thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. Three thousand pounds, and you got that to be two percent. Uh, and this is compound interest. So you're going to be using the compound interest formula, and it's for two years. Now the compound interest formula is um, amount amount is equal to principal principal times the multiplier raised to the power the number of years okay um the principal amount is three thousand pounds uh the multiplier is a hundred percent plus two percent okay and that's all raised to the power two years okay let's rewrite that properly now that would be three thousand times um a hundred and two percent if i rewrite that as a decimal that would be 1.02 raised to the power two and if you work this out you would have a uh, three thousand one hundred and twenty pounds and um twenty pence Okay, so that's it for that one. Question 4B says that Kingsley buys a portable Bluetooth speaker. The speaker has been reduced by 20% in a sale. He pays £72 for the speaker in a sale. What was the original price of the speaker? Now, this is a percentage decrease problem because it says it's been reduced by 20%. I'll just highlight that for you to see the area where it says that reduced by 20%. Okay, so um, so to calculate percentage decrease, you start by uh, working out um, 100% minus 20%, which is equal to 80%. And I'm just going to write it as a decimal to make it easier for me when I'm doing the calculation. 80% as a decimal is 0 0.8. Okay, so now I want to calculate uh, 80% of 
um, 72 yeah that is um, 72 times 0. Point, oh no it's not 80 percent of seven 80 percent of a certain amount eh, gives 72 pounds okay so let's call that amount X X times 0. 0.8 is equal to 72 yeah okay 0. 0.8 x is equal to 72 x therefore is equal to 72 divided by 0. 0.8 let me get rid of the decimal point by multiplying the top and bottom numbers by 10 this is going to give me 720 over 8 8 can go into 72 um nine times this means that uh, my x is equal to 90 that was the original amount that was the original amount that the product was before the reduction in price uh, question five says michelle owns a cafe she stacks coffee mugs as shown in the diagram so that's how she stacks her mugs michelle measures the height of each coffee mug as 12 centimeter correct to the nearest centimeter i'm just going to highlight that because that looks like an upper bound upper and lower bounds problem each stack coffee mug creates four centimeter extra height correct to the nearest centimeter again um so it says that michelle knows that the vertical height between two shelves is exactly nine centimeter so it's this this one is exactly nine centimeter yeah so the question is can michelle be certain that she'll be able to place one stack of seven coffee mugs between the two shelves give a reason for your answer okay if it's um if it's um calculated co correct the nearest centimeter it means that we have to um add the upper bound add the upper bound to um each one because that will give us the highest that will give us the highest amount that uh, have highest amount of space that the mugs can take if they are stuck together so if the the upper bound for the cup for the first one is 12 centimeter 12 12 centimeter plus 0 0.5 okay because i'm um, to the nearest so the nearest centimeter means that you have to add um, add 0 0.5 uh, to each mug. So if the first one is 12.5 centimeter plus um, you'd have if it's seven, it means you would have six times 4.5 um centimeters to the nearest centimeter this is going to give you uh let me see i think this would give you a total of um 39.5 centimeters but that is more than the that is more than 39 okay on the in the shelf it says 39 centimeter exactly so 39.5 is more than Therefore, um, we can make a conclusion then that no, no, Michelle cannot be certain. Because 39.5 is greater than 39 centimeter I'm just going to put centimeter there question d says last year the median finish time was 26 minutes by how many minutes was the me median time better this year you must show all your workings so it was 26 minutes last year and this year the median if we look at the graph cumulative frequency uh graph we're looking at um 25 because the whole thing is 50 so if that is 25 then we're going to follow that down all the way down that's going to take us to uh, 24.5 yeah so that will be 24.5 this year now uh 26 minus 24.5 is going to give you uh, 1.5 
minutes. So question 6C says, the organizers hope that 80% of the runners would finish the race within 30 minutes. Complete the following sentence. Some percent of runners finish the race within 30 minutes. That looks like uh, within 30 minutes, within 30 minutes, I'm going to go on my graph onto 30 minutes and follow that all the way through to this end of the cumulative frequency. That looks like 35 there. So 35 out of 50, I think that would be 70%. 70% of the runners finish the race within 30 minutes. And how many, 80% of the runners finish the race within how many minutes? Now, 80% of the runners, these are the runners on the cumulative frequency. I'm going to go on to 40 because that would be 80%. 100% would be 100. Then um, 80% would be 50. 80% would be 40. So I'm going to go on to 40 and follow that all the way down. All the way down, that's going to take me up to 35. So that would be 35 minutes. 35 minutes. So question six says, is it certain that the last runner's finish time was 45 minutes? I don't think it is. It's not certain because um, 45 minutes is just in that group there, 40 to 45. It doesn't necessarily mean the first runner or the last runner. The, the runners, the, the runner times were all recorded and put into groups. So the people who are in this group could have been the first runner or the second runner or the third runner. It has nothing to do with the last runner. Okay, so um, how am I going to word that now as my reason? Yeah, so um, 45 minutes. Is not necessarily the last runner just those who fell into that group so i'm going to leave it there okay so question six says this year 50 runners look took part in a five kilometer race in the Brecon Beacons. All 50 runners finished the race. The cumulative frequency diagram below shows the times taken by the runners to finish the race, which is the modal group. Yeah, just looking at that now, just by um, observation, I can tell that this, this, this group here um, has the highest um, frequency because um, that looks like 27 there, 27 minus zero is 27. But this group here is um, 30 minus 25 is five. And this group is 35 minus 30, which is five. This group is 40 minus 35, which is five. And this one too. So this is the one with the highest frequency. So I'm gonna go with um, 20 to 25 minutes.